Thank you so much for coming and listening to our important stories this evening. What if kids didn't spend an average of six and a half hours in front of a screen each day and spent them six and a half hours out in nature instead? What if we didn't judge how successful we were on how much money we made, but we judged success on how well we took care of our environment instead? Can you imagine what Mother Nature would look like? I mean, would we still see the same amount of plastic dumped into the oceans every year? Would we still see millions of sharks killed every year for a tasteless fin? Would our oceans be fished to a level where some populations will never recover? How can we raise a generation of environmental ambassadors when all we see are kids staring at a screen day in and day out? And if we are going to raise a generation of environmental ambassadors, how can we do this successfully? I think we can do this by getting kids outside and getting them connected to nature. And I don't know about you guys here, but when I was young, I was always outside in nature, whether I was playing in the park with my sister, walking in the forest with my mom, swimming in the local lake with my dad and my uncles, or swimming in the freezing cold North Sea of the sunny UK, where I spent all of my holidays. But that was my childhood. That was what inspired me to become a marine biologist. I felt so connected to nature. I felt like part of Mother Nature. I felt, felt like I was made of the same substance. So, oh, sorry. And granted, the life of a marine biologist isn't always that glamorous, but it allowed me to travel and live in 16 different countries, working with amazing organizations, and understand that animals are sentient, conscious, conscious beings too, capable of forming love and connections just like us. And that connection to Mother Earth is so important if we are going to survive. So how do I know that animals are sentient, conscious beings? And I can honestly tell you that I've had some of the most intimate experiences in the ocean, where I felt like I've been graciously accepted into their world and allowed to swim with some of these majestic creatures. And I've witnessed firsthand that human nature connection. And I promise you, when you feel this connection, the same connection as I do, this will change your life forever. I'm going to tell you a story. In 2017, I was sent to South Africa by Save Our Seas. And my job was to develop an internship program and create marine ambassadors. As part of this program, we recruited 12 kids from the townships. These kids were from some of the most underprivileged areas of South Africa. Some of them didn't have families. Some of them didn't even know where they were going to get their me next meal from. So the idea of making marine ambassadors from these kids, for me, I had my doubts. And on the first day, when they turned up full of attitude, we really didn't know what to do with them, so we decided to teach them to surf first, which was an ingenious idea because every single kid in South Africa wants to learn to surf. And so you can see from these photos that we really didn't need to worry because this was from the first day. They were already starting to form a connection to the ocean. We took them to skin dive in the, in the kelp forest, one of the most beautiful ecosystems in the world. And all you could hear was them squealing as they dove down, swimming with the octopus, grabbing a starfish, throwing seaweed at their friends. They were having so much fun, but learning so much about the ocean, and they didn't even know it. So on the last day, oh no, go back, sorry. <laughs> No, 
no, no, no, back, back. This one, thank you, sorry. <laughs> so on the last day, when I had to say goodbye to them, and I noticed the difference from the first day to the last day was just incredible. They had fallen in love with the ocean. It was like a passion had been instilled and a spark had been lit within them and their lives had changed forever. But this connection I feel is missing from so many children's lives nowadays. Kids are so plugged in to technology and are so distracted by things like iPads and iPhones and video games, they've lost that will to go outside. And it's funny because when kids are in nature, they're not able only just to see the natural beauty in nature, but they just become hands-on and bend down and start picking things up, like all the things that we find are disgusting, like slugs and worms and big hairy spiders, but all these materials offer endless opportunities for learning and a strong connection, a physical connection to the environment. All that senses are enhanced, and they touch in, and they're hearing, and, and feeling, and smelling, and sometimes they're tasting too. And when they're out in the environment, it also induces a sense of calm. And the health benefits are well documented. It, being out in nature can help reduce the symptoms of ADHD and anxiety and depression in children. And the UN General Surgeon just released a report saying not only are we going through a, um, a pandemic of COVID, but also of mental health illnesses, especially in the younger generation. But they also say that time out in nature can reduce this. And being out in nature is one of the best ways to show kids how important it is to us. Why do we need biodiversity? Why do we need a healthy ecosystem? So many people don't even understand that, not just children. So yes, it is difficult to teach kids about what the importance of the, the connection, the children-nature connection is, but it's not impossible. This is Sangalai. This is an island that I lived on a few years ago in Fiji. It's in the middle of the South Pacific. It takes 12 minutes to walk around it. It's totally powered by solar power. There's no technology, very little technology on this island. On this island live a community of Fijians and their ethos in life is share everything and you'll never go without. But as I said, there was no, very little technology. So you can imagine the horror when my 30 volunteers turned up with their laptops and their iPhones and their iPads, all to stay with us for two or three months. And when they were told that they were not going to be able to use this technology, there was a lot of anxiety and a lot of tears and a lot of arguments for the first few days. But once they got involved, in the activities out on the carver farms, swimming around the coral reefs, diving off the side of the island, cooking in the kitchen, and even dancing with the old ladies in the community halls. They stopped asking for their iPhones and their laptops and their iPads. And they started to organically learn another culture, another language and another way of living. These kids have gone on to work in marine conservation all around the world. Some are researchers, some are educators, some work in policy, but they're all making a difference. That was my inspiration. Sorry, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> And like me, when I was young, I was inspired by my mom to take care of the environment. And I want to give, I want to empower the next generation and give them a choice and a voice of what happens to our environment. So that's why I created We Love the Sea. It's a place where kids can come to learn about the environment through imagination and play. Two key ingredients in children's education. 
Some kids come because they would just want to be outside and make new friends. Some kids come because their parents have forced them to because they want to go to the beach club and get a margarita. I can see some of the parents here. <laughs> some kids come because they're super curious about the ocean and they want to know so much about it. And some kids come just because they want to know more about what's happening in the environment. But it doesn't matter why they come. When they come, they want to have fun. And when I hand them their marine biology certificate, and their faces light up, and they're so proud of themselves, and my heart just fills with joy because I'm so proud of them too, for turning up every week, enthusiastic, and wanting to learn, and wanting to know what they can do for the ocean, because they're already starting to understand that the ocean is not separate from us. And we're not separate from the ocean. We're all one, and we're all responsible for taking care of each other. So why now? Why is this important now? Because in the last 30 years, we've lost 50% of the coral reefs. And in one generation, we've lost half the marine species. So yes, we have to do something about this now, and we don't have to be marine biologists to do this. There's so many things we can do. We can make small acts to create a big impact. So what can we do? We can go outside and do a beach clean. And then we can look at all the, thing, all the trash and then we can maybe make better decisions about where we buy our groceries next time. We can go snorkeling and we can just feel how amazing it is to be in the water. We can go scuba diving on the coral reefs and then and look at all the beautiful fishes around us. And the next time we go to a restaurant, maybe we can make a better choice about what kind of fish we order. Or we can just go outside and have fun. Scientists believe that humans have an innate connection, an innate love for the natural world, and we like to seek connection to all living things. This is a theory called biophilia. I believe that we all have it in us to be conservationists and naturalists. We just need to find that connection again. And I want to see kids playing outside. They should be outside. It's healthy. It's free. It's a really good way for them to understand their physical connection to the environment. And it's where they've always played for centuries. And I just want to finish with this quote. In the end, we will conserve only what we love. We will love only what we understand. And we will understand only what we are taught. Thank you for listening. Yeah.